Thank you for staying with us on TVC Breakfast. Earlier we had uh, TVC News Sarah Ayeku there at the newspaper stand hearing from newspaper readers about big stories uh, of the day. But moving on now, having emerged on the strength of the popular demand of the people, an Amber State's Governor, Professor Chukuma Soludo, elicited high expectations from within and outside his state. He made a number of promises, giving hints that there would be disruptive change in the way the state has been governed. And so far, one of the greatest challenges the Soludo administration has been faced with is insecurity, especially the activities of unknown gunmen and the indigenous people of Biafra who have been accused of being behind uh, these series of attacks. So in searching for a lasting solution to the security situation, the governor visited the IPOB leader Namdi Kanu, who is in the DSS custody. Is this visit a right step in the right direction? Tamo Mashaya sat with the governor to discuss this and more as he marks 100 days in office. All right, sir. All right, it's good to, to have you on uh, TVC Breakfast. Oh, thank you very much, Sam. It's really a great pleasure um, having me. Thank you very much. It's uh, been uh, 100 days and you've marked it with uh, uh, quite uh, some uh, amount of uh, attention. How would you access uh, um, your first century in office, as it were? <laughs> Centenary days. <laughs> yes, uh, 100 days, uh, less, uh, like you said. Quite frankly, I'm not a believer in this uh, 100 day fad, as I said in my address. But since uh, you guys in the media you know, kept asking about it, I said, OK, I had to make an address on that day. I had to remember. That is 100 days for me. I was just running each day uh, to deliver. Just to say the 100 days, as I said in my address, have been um, a bit, if you like, uh, bumpy as expected, challenging as expected. But I must say, so far, so good. Um, I applied for the job, and uh, the good people of Anambra employed me. And uh, when I applied, I knew the, 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 the challenges ahead. And even in my uh, inaugural address, I did uh, spell out, you know, several of those challenges, including about four or five paragraphs on the uh, humongous insecurity um, that we were uh, at uh, the moment. So uh, no surprises, I must say, no big surprises um, doing the, the job that uh, the people employed me to do. Well, um... Your inaugural was very unique in the sense of his uh, appeal to humility and, uh, and low-key um, uh, profile. Um, how do you reconcile that with the glamour and the somewhat fast space of the uh, fast pace of uh, governance? And uh, actually, since uh, you took on uh, the uh, toga, it has actually been fast paced. I have been able to reconcile all of this. <laughs> well, uh, actually, the, both of them go hand in hand. The, uh, the inaugural was to remind ourselves and remind us as a people what governance is supposed to be about. It's not about pomp and pageantry. It's about service. As you are, Sam, if you, when you get employed in TVC or in any other place as executive director, as managing director, and so on, I haven't seen anyone who shows up on the first day of his um, office with um, uh, all the drum and the, all the stuff at the gate of his office saying I have come to a Zoom office and so on. It's a culture that I don't know where this is all coming from. And um, at the same time too, it detracts from the whole essence of what this thing is all about. Uh, furthermore, it just gets to the heart of reminding us that this is a very poor society. Nigeria is a very poor country. On per capita basis, we're very poor. I mean, a country of about, uh, just about $2,000. Now with the exchange rate, even less so, uh, grossly. It's a very poor society. The amount of waste, the amount of, uh, that we get onto, onto um, you know, peripherals, things that don't really get down to delivering uh, services to the people. Just We just need to constantly remind ourselves about what the essence of public service is. You get to office, you get there on your first day. And on my first day, 
I actually worked uh, for eight hours or 45 minutes. Um, the first three hours were devoted to three and a half hours. They were devoted to serious meeting with the security chiefs, uh, trying to dimension all the problems and the solutions, uh, as it were. Met with the permanent secretaries, met with all the teams, met key appointments on that day, meeting with the various stakeholders and trying to get the government hung together. And then the next day we were at Oboko to signpost our um, uh, urban regeneration agenda. I must have walked uh, on foot for more than five uh, kilometers on that day. We're trying to say and give the people the hope that we are coming. We, we resumed work and we're here to work. Uh, for me, it's a 24 by 7 operation. So when you talk about uh, the frenetic uh, speed, that is what is required, the humongous challenges that our people need attention to. And we've come with a manifesto, which we are determined to implement every inch of, uh, despite the challenges. The manifesto sits on five key pillars, and we have to um, at least do everything, give it our all, our best, to demonstrate to the people our commitment, our desire to do this. I, I didn't come to this job um, just to say I'm governor, to, uh, you know, the pomp and pageantry of it, his excellency, this, that, and all those things. So that's why I don't answer all those uh, appellations, excellency, this, that, that. They just remind ourselves, I'm just you like, Mr. Governor, I've come to work. I want to clean the gutters. I've come to, I'm hired to carry the waste. I'm hired to bring security of life and property, bring law and order, fix their economic well-being and create an economic transformation, have a new social order and with the human capital that goes with it, have a new governance structure with a rule of law and a new value system, then have a environment, um, which is a number one existential threat to the people of Anambra. That's what they hired me to do. And I got to get to job, uh, get to work on my uh, cap. And you said the solution is here. That's what it's all here. <laughs> so I got to wake up each morning uh, running uh, 24 by 7 with the team. And uh, with the team, properly uh, now getting fully aligned uh, to the mission and vision and the character of the governance uh, itself, which is service delivery to the people service to the people. We are employees of the people. Uh, they are the boss, we are the, um, the employee. And, uh, and, um, and that's, that's what this thing is all about. Like I said, I applied for the job and they hired me and I got to deliver. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> just uh, your transition uh, period, you had the OB Ezekwesili committee and uh, they, it, quite, uh, it created quite some attention because of the, uh, the names, uh, you know, on that committee. And I wonder um, how much of the input of that committee is in your agenda now in government? Well, um, Anambra is an A state and nothing uh, but the best is good enough for us. And uh, we had to tap into the best that we could uh, pull together, of course, led by our illustrious daughter, um, uh, uh, Dr. Obiez of Pesele. And then uh, with the other team members uh, drawn from wherever we could find them. And um, the eggheads <laughs> came together and worked very, very hard. I must commend them for the uh, excellent job that they did. Of course, uh, the uh, program. I mean, the suggestions, the agenda, the program that they have also uh, come up with, use as the foundation, the manifesto that we had campaigned with. Um, I mean, our contract with the Anambra people. And so much of what they had was just amplifications, extensions, uh, some uh, bits of, um, you know, uh, if you can, amplifications of um, several aspects of that manifesto in a very coherent manner that we operational way that we very much appreciate. So basically, we have three operating documents uh, that we're using to guide us. Number one is so the Soludo solution, the People's Manifesto. 
as the foundational document. We have the Anambra Vision 2070, uh, which I chaired. Uh, we produce the Anambra uh, Vision 2070 document, um, visualizing what Anambra will look like in 50 years' time. And then the, um, the Transition Committee report. Indeed, these three documents constitute the documents. Of course, each builds on the other. Uh, because I authored, I mean, uh, I chaired the, uh, the Vision 2070 and then authored my manifesto. And then those became inputs for the transition committee. You can see that they are interlinked. And we have run for an election, made a promise, and we are determined. We are determined. Uh, I don't know about others. People run for election, you get the consultant to write glossy manifesto. And after that, they forget what they sit there. We are determined to take this literally as a contract which we must deliver upon. And we are working every day to deliver upon that. So the transition document and the manifesto and vision 2070, they're all um, interwoven. And if you like, uh, one major broad document that's always sitting in front of us um, and everybody in government, um, you know, signs on to deliver on this. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> it has been you've spoken about the Inewe and on the Shadowpoli, and uh, the fact that these two capital areas of investment in, uh, in Anambra State probably have no equals anywhere in the country. And uh, how do you transform these into, into IGR? Because I know that I, I was with some editors with you the first time you made a crack at governorship, and you complained about how Anambra was such a potential for revenue that has not been tapped. Now that you are in the saddle, what is the strategy to make Anambra one of the elite in IGR in the country and make that place um, that's in a way and on the not just the um, so people call Rakta kind of market it is, but a more streamlined modern um, uh, market with uh, modern technology and um, an administrative monitoring. Yo, I think you led it all. You, you asked the question <laughs> and I think you provided the answer, Sam. <laughs> 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 yes. Uh, indeed, uh, Anambra has all the potentials to be whatever we will and uh, work hard that it can be. Uh, you've only pointed out to um, more than 60% of Anambra is really now urbanized. So Anambra is growing rapidly into one huge, uh, if you like, urban metropolis. Uh, everywhere is getting built up albeit likely in a haphazard manner. That's why part of our agenda on environment is to have clean, green, planned cities, markets, and, um, and communities. Um, yes, Newi and Onisha have huge potentials. And our first major, major agenda, they speak to the five fingers of the uh, People's Manifesto. The, the first being law and order. We need to restore security, law, and order uh, into the generality of our number. And that's why we're taking on head on the criminals so that are, uh, you know, spreading all over the place and uh, taking them head on. And um, I think they realize now uh, our resolve and determination to bring peace and quiet and the law and order uh, back, to the, uh, back to the homeland. And um, once you've tackled the issue of security, uh, law and order, uh, people in chaotic traffic, and uh, you know you have traffic that people are held on for five, six hours uh, in some places, and so on, due to all kinds of um, you know, <laughs> if you like, um, people just becoming law unto themselves, uh, lawlessness as it were. So once we're wrestling down the issue of law and order, security, law and order. Then we're getting into part of our economic transformation agenda. And they also the environment, having planned clean and green uh, place, is our urban regeneration uh, program. You know, cleaning up the place, Mungo's waste. You have to make it livable for it to be a prosperous place. Uh, 
uh, were dressing waste, were the Silton uh, drainages, were getting the place to look, I mean, and getting the, um, uh, if you like, the markets themselves, the residential areas and so on and so forth to breathe life into these cities uh, as it were. When they are alive, you know, with the basics, rule of law, uh, property rights, infrastructural development uh, in these places, we are tackling the issue of infrastructure, getting out, out of the roads and out of our markets. And then, if you're now talking into, of course, the whole areas of human capital, education, health, technology, everything, a critical aspect of what we're actually um, doing uh, in the area of IGR, because we mentioned um, internally generated revenue, IGR, is that in today's world in Nigeria, it's become everything. Oil is out. Oil has ended. Oil used to contribute 70% uh, of uh, government revenue, but now it's down to zero. Since February, it contributed zero. I, NMPC contributed literally zero to the federation account. So oil is out and governments have now to get back to the basics. Um, again, somebody said, how come uh, God designed it that you have to assume office at this time, a month before assumption of office, oil came down to zero. <laughs> and then with the insecurity all over the place and so on, I said, no, I mean, despite, I um, have no complaint, I applied. And I uh, want to be able to say that in spite of the challenges, we are able to deliver. But a critical driver of our agenda is everything technology and technology everywhere. And uh, we are digitizing our revenue uh, generation effort. In fact, we almost have a slogan that anything we cannot collect digitally, we forgo it. And so we are in a fast-paced process of digitizing everything. And um, last week, um, uh, even this week, uh, not even last week, um, I had a session with the um, the markets. I think that was on Wednesday this week. We had a session with all the transport unions, market unions, and so on and so forth uh, in the state to roll out our new agenda in terms of revenue collection, which is digital. You know, you don't pay through any third party. Pay direct. Uh, into the coffers of government will give you your receipt and emblem. And if you are a motorist, you pay. You have that gives you a permit to operate and enter and load and offload in any uh, public park and so on. And nobody harasses you, don't pay anything extra. For the markets, you pay direct to government, not market unions collecting on our behalf and so on and so forth. So we quite a tinge of disruptive, some disruptive. Uh, changes, but also anchored on an ongoing or relentless effort to bring down law and order and then uh, to regenerate these cities, breathe much life into them. That way, you can't tax a dead uh, horse. Uh, <laughs> you can only tax businesses that are thriving. So we have emphasis on getting those businesses cutting down the cost of doing business. In fact, now mortgage, uh, one of the things we've been able to do is cutting down the time it takes to perfect mortgage from about six months or more to 10 days, um, as it were. We are digitizing the land registry. And uh, the expectation is that in time, you should be able to transfer title in no more than 72 hours and so on and so forth. So the fast-paced changes so to make this place the number one place to do business. Because only when you have thriving businesses, only when you have prosperity, even if your tax rate is low, you generate more in terms of uh, the bountiful uh, of uh, revenue that comes into government. So our goal is to build a livable and prosperous homeland. And in that bit, much of the capital, I'm telling our people too, that with all your money out, um, we got to pay our bills and with a promise to the people of Anambra that every penny that they put in our hand, every penny in our hand, we will show them what it is useful, value for money. That's where we're headed.
No, good, 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 good answer. Better than my own. <laughs> um, and you, you spoke about bringing Anambra to the world and the world to Anambra. How do you put all of this in that context? <laughs> that's, all, that's all what the agenda is all about. Uh, I think you are um, absolutely right. That's our agenda. Um, Anambra, you know, um, like I said, we've got everything, all the potentials to be whatever we will that it can be. In terms of the country, Anambra is like a hub. It's a hub, and that's what made the main market at Tunisia to become the largest market in West Africa. We have boundaries with the north through Kogi, with boundaries with the south, south through Delta and rivers, and boundaries with the three other southeastern states with the river Niger passing through. I mean, it's actually like a hub, okay? Um, almost like a commercial. And we want to transform Anambra's economy from a predominantly informal trading post to an industrial tech leisure hub um, of uh, Nigeria and uh, out there, as we say, in Africa here. But in today's world, um, you can be so much inward looking, okay? And especially with the oil out of the way, um, what you can get to the rest of the world and what the rest of the world can get in will create the dynamism that we actually cherish. We want our number as one smart mega city uh, to become an international city an international city that is open for business with the rest of the world and the rest of the world having business in Anambra. We're actually working very hard now on the Medana in Anambra pro, uh, products. Um, as you see, I drive, I've met the Inos in my official car. Yeah. Anything you produce in Anambra will be the chief marketing officer for anything and everything produced in Anambra. And uh, with our international cargo airport, there, even though we haven't been granted that status, we're waiting and hoping to have that um, in no distant time. We're actually putting together now an export emporium and uh, trying to apply now for an EPZ status. Uh, so we can begin to aggregate what it is that is made in Anambra. I wear made in Anambra shoes. I, uh, they are wet, the only textile there, we're trying to attract some textiles back. Um, everything made here. And we want to be able to take them and showcase what our people can do with our ingenuity, with the Newe Automobile uh, Industrial Park, with uh, the Ornisha's uh, commercial uh, heartland. And then we've gotten into technology as well, uh, with the network with the rest of the world. Our people are highly talented. If you take out much of the tech hubs in Lagos, I go to Alaba, go to Ikeja, and so on. And I see these are number boys all over the place. And I travel around uh, the world, and I see them all over uh, the place. Now I want to create our own world, uh, business incubation and uh, innovation um, uh, district, uh, as it were. So uh, we're putting together all of this, but the foundation being law and order, rule of law. Uh, security of life of property, infrastructural development, getting a, a educational system, one that can produce human capital and health system, one that can produce a human capital that is productive at home and exportable abroad. Um, in today's world, it doesn't just produce for the local because our human capital will become also one of our major exports and the remittances therefrom and the networks and learning and the exchanges between the homeland and the abroad uh, and the diaspora uh, population. It's something that we need to network with and uh, try to um, mine, we want to mine uh, global networks, you know, to the limit as it were. So Anambra is on that course, that's our vision. That's what we're working towards uh, with a clear agenda, working each day. Uh, getting a number to become that smart mega city, but it's all that is also an international city. Mm. That's interesting. Now going to security, you paid a visit to Nam de Kano uh, the other day, took took a lot of attention uh, nationwide uh, and so on. And the, the question is, how do we transform that as a symbolism into actually 
uh, an effort towards cleansing uh, Anambra of all uh, forms of uh, agitation and criminality. Well, uh, thank you very much. I um, yes, when I came in, I did make a point that um, I that um, I put up my hands and said I'm prepared to dialogue with anyone, to discuss with anybody and everybody who could play any role in bringing about uh, sec uh, security, uh, law and order to the homeland. Uh, because without that, nothing happened. And I made it clear that I was prepared to dialogue with any and everybody whom I thought had something to offer. And, um, and in that process, we met with the clergy, we met with the town unions, we met with the uh, traditional rulers, women groups, youths, we even had the security summit, uh, and I had tried to meet with all kinds of disparate groups, appealed, even gave amnesty to those in the bush and in their various camps, come out, we'll provide you something, we'll try to help you to rehabilitate, and so on. And the truth of the matter is that uh, Namde Kano and his, uh, is a leader of the IPOB, okay. And um, the IPOB has a, a group called the ESN, Eastern right. Security Network, ESN. And for better or for worse, <laughs> discussing security or insecurity in the South is one way or the other. Again, the conversation gets back again to this particular uh, sector. And uh, it's important in trying to be, have full coverage uh, that everybody, Everybody, literally mean everybody, is brought to the table in that conversation. And so, yes, I thought he was a very critical uh, stakeholder in this uh, conversation, um, bringing peace and stability in the homeland. And I paid him a visit, and um, and and then was I was quite impressed with his um, disposition. And uh, he was saying that in the presence of even um, some of the senior officials of uh, the TSS that. I mean, he very much um, detested the spilling of innocent blood by some criminals um, all over uh, the place that have also, you know, operating, unfortunately, they claim to be operating under the name of IPOB or ESN. Um, that's what they claim. I, I mean, I don't know uh, which is good, but it's evident to me that quite a lot of criminal gangs have emerged uh, because it's a lucrative criminality, kidnapping, stealing, taking people's properties, and so on and so forth. It's become such a lucrative uh, uh, business for them that you know different camps, different commanders, different segments. Every criminal gang now claims to be um, a liberation movement, uh, as it were. It's become evident. But one thing that I, um, I was happy about was uh, hearing him denounce uh, criminality, hearing him you know, expressing regret over the, um, the way things have turned and told me even that he wasn't the one even who authorized the uh, sit at home, uh, so to speak. And I uh, didn't quite understand um, uh, that. And severally, which is interesting, um, before the visit and after the visit, he's on the official spokesperson of IPOB, and they have been issuing statements. They have condemned the criminality going on and dissociated themselves from it. They have um, uh, also issued statements saying, I mean, condemning the sit at home, <laughs> you know, uh, every Monday, yeah. and then some other gangs issue counter statements and so on and so forth. And we are dealing with that. So we have those kind of things, at least it is now on record. And I think uh, following the, um, um, his hearing on last Tuesday, he made some statements publicly where he was asking for calm and peace in the Southeast and so on. You know, we need everybody who has a voice. Of course, he has his own followers uh, as it were to come into this, all we want Bottom line is peace, peace, law and order, security in the homeland so that we can have this livable and prosperous homeland. 
Some people believe that uh, Namdi Kanu could not be trusted because he had, uh, before he, he got into uh, government uh, uh, custody, issued statements that were actually incendiary and that he had set this, thing, uh, set this fire uh, on the mountain. Do you think he's playing humble because he's under um, government um, control or that the matter has now carried out of his own control? Well, I am. I don't have the gift of clairvoyance um, <laughs> to know what is going on in the mind or what is the and what happened and how it happened. For me, I'm I have a single-minded focus on outcomes, um, uh, as it were. Uh, whether whatever anybody did yesterday or said yesterday for me, that's it. Okay, fair enough. We learn from history, and all of that is good to speculate about what is happening, what could be this or what could be that. For me, the important thing, the substance for me, was hearing him, having this conversation with him about how the homeland was becoming desolate if we allow this criminality to go on. And himself expressing his utmost displeasure about that and consequently asking his followers uh, to embrace peace and um, and uh, law and order and security as the case may be. So for me, that is the substance, that is the takeaway, and that's the one that I hold on to. Whatever may be the motives, whatever, whatever happened in the past or how it happened or whatever, that's not, now I have a job to do. And my primary job is to bring peace and security to, to my people and anybody who has something to offer. Uh, in that regard, we got to um, uh, get the person to play uh, such a role. I think um, uh, in the fullness of time, it remains to be seen, as you rightly said, um, a lot of criminal gangs have emerged. That's no question about it. A lot of criminal gangs have emerged. And that's because it's profitable. Um, yesterday, I mean, about yesterday, a major raid on some of the, one of the camps at all, uh, in uh, Osumo, you know, they got to the camps. Six vehicles were rescued, including a Hilux, or uh, belonging to the uh, Federal Ministry of Mines and Steel, <laughs> you know, that people mm -hmm. had taken into the place. Six mm -hmm. vehicles, Jeeps and so on and so forth, 15 motorcycles. They even have mounted the uh, drone and uh, surveillance cameras on the ways to their camp so that they could have early warning signals and so on. That tells you how sophisticated these guys become. These are criminals. What are you doing with other people's vehicles in your camp? What are you doing there? We've, we've captured some, we've gone into some camps and recovered notebooks, recovered notebooks with which they do uh, accounting. In one notebook, they were keeping record of all those that they kidnapped, how much they paid for ransom. And this one, they paid their 5 million balance, 2 million. This one, they paid 3.5 million under comment column, freed. The other one, they paid their 150,000, freed. And all that kind of thing. Another notebook tells you about how much, uh, what they are spending, how the expenses. And then you get to that camp and you find assortment of vehicles, people's homes. This is, this is not agitation. This is criminality. Yeah. And that's just making money. Mm -hmm. So if you find an Arcada rider and they get him and take him, which is the other side of it, idolatry. They're everywhere they are in camps, there is a shrine. Everywhere. They're, they're not there with their idolatrous uh, behavior. There is a shrine where they go to uh, get people swear to oaths and they initiate them into their... Uh, ways of life uh, and so on. And once you have this guy, an Al-Qaeda rider, he goes in, they initiated and they carry his arms and they kidnap someone and they extort uh, millions. And tomorrow you want him to go back to Al-Qaeda riding. No, his plane is lucrative criminality and idolatry. That's, that's what is at work dominantly. So, and, uh, but we're giving them a run for their money now. And uh, we've said nowhere in Anambra will be safe. No forest, no bush, no home, no house, 
if we catch you in the house, we pull, pull that house down. If we get you in the forest, we'll take you out. And we're taking them all out. And I still make the plea uh, to these guys. We are very determined because the homeland must be free of these criminals. But we still appeal to them. You repent, come. We offer you the olive branch. Uh, we can provide you with some training, retrain you, and you can find useful ways of being engaged in society. They can be part of uh, typical vigilante after reorientation and retraining. They can become part of law and order. They could be trained into some other things and we'll find some money there. Maybe if we don't find the money, we can get to Sam and Co to help us raise money. <laughs> and then we can use to rehabilitate them into something um, uh, <laughs> more useful to the society. So I think we are, we are pursuing this law and order piece on, on all fronts. You know, the carrot, the stick, and so on. But for those who are determined criminals, we have no choice but to take them out. And a number of people are united on this, um, that we've got to take them out. And we are surely determined each day uh, taking the war to them. There will be no safe place for any criminal in Anambra State. Yeah. Now, how much of uh, federal buy-in are you getting in your work in terms of intel intelligence, a network, um, troop deployment, and even technology? Oh, the federal government, I must say, I must commend the federal government and the uh, security agencies. Uh, they have an up to it, I must say. Um, you know, Nigeria is facing quite uh, huge challenges in terms of security. Uh, but I must say the, uh, the various agencies, um, the police, the military, the soldiers, the uh, Department of State Security, DSS, the um, uh, Navy, the uh, Civil Defense, and, um, and they're, they're quite, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I must say so far, so good. We seem to be all in sync. Of course, together with our own, uh, if you like, our own uh, vigilante service, our strike force, our vigilante which is also complementing the efforts of all this. The intelligence is coming. I'm commending the Anambra citizens now uh, because by the time I came in, there was total complete, complete silence. Nobody was prepared to volunteer any information. But now as we're getting onto this campaign and uh, you know, engaging with the people, mobilizing um, the people and the people are awakening to the near, new realities, we have seven phone numbers and all of them are around me. Um, and so we get timely uh, intelligence. People are now calling, people are sending us messages even with the phone numbers of this, and we'll go and pick them. Um, it's people who are taking us and taking us to these camps where they are, and we're taking the files to them. So, so far, I would say, given the limited constraints that the federal government has, given the limited constraints of these uh, security forces, I think they are giving quite um, a good account of themselves here uh, in Anambra. And we've been producing phenomenal results. And I'm sure that the citizens of Anambra are um, um, testifying to this. Yeah, I think we could go on and on with this interview, but you've given <laughs> us uh, a quite uh, enough uh, sweep of uh, your activities so far in 100 days, looking like uh, activities actually one year. <laughs> so, uh, I wish you well in uh, in the days and uh, months and years ahead as you take on the task of uh, bringing Anambra to the world and the world to Anambra. Thank you very much, sir. For Thank you. Thank you. Deeply appreciate this, uh, Sam. Thank you.